Welcome back to the GG Over Easy Podcast. My name is Blue Eslo here with Robbie, the Glizzy Goblin himself. Today we are chilling, <laughs> talking about a whole lot of video games. Uh, we talk about some Ubisoft and how they think that subscription-based service is the future. Uh, we talk some about uh, some... Uh, Power what, World. We talk, we talk we about Power World. This new Pokemon uh, capitalist game, if you will, that I uh, think... Yeah, 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 we talk about uh, how they did kind of yoink quite a few designs, and they weren't really subtle about it. Yeah, uh, talk a little bit about how uh, Arios is a f- fucking beast. This dude yeah. is insane. I actually went to go work out with Arios yesterday, and this dude is terrifying in any any workout he does. And then we have a lot of Q and A today. Some quite revealing Q and A today, dare I say. Yeah. And uh, we have a good time here at the GG Over Easy podcast. So if you like us being dumb, goofy, then stick around. Bull turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a way better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor or a worse alternative. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume. They look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in the bad habit is wrong. So instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from the habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning, flavored air device that does just that. The feel of the Fume is so nice. You can tell it's quality materials. It's awesome. you got to try the new Solano Fume. It's made with premium walnut barrel and an onyx-coated mouthpiece that is so much softer. Start the year off right with the good habit by going to tryfume.com gg and get the journey pack today. Fume is giving our listeners 10% off when they use the code GG to help make starting the good habit that much easier. Thank you, Fume, for sponsoring this podcast. This episode of the GG Over Easy podcast is brought to you by our GG legends, uh, Halcyonics, Hoth, Fields, and Green Pete. Uh, big shouts out to the uh, GG Over Easy legends again. Thank you guys all for joining the Patreon and trying out all the things. Uh, it's been a great start. Uh, sorry about uh, having the podcast upload a little late. Uh, I had an issue with my Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, I had to go back to older version because every time I got to 100% on the exporting, it would just crash. And then you would go over to the file and it'd be like corrupted. So I literally had to try like six different times and they all just crashed every time. And the part that sucks is it took so long to export it that it just was a whole thing. How you doing, yeah. Blue? I'm doing good. Um, it's cold as shit. It is. Is it so cold, cold over in Tejas? Uh, it's so cold and windy. We had um like a like a sub. We had like an 18 degree day on Wednesday, and that was literally the worst. Because I usually go to the gym pretty early in the morning, so I'm like up at like nine or like six a.m. depending on the day. Yeah. And I happened to wake up at like five that morning and i was just destroyed because i woke up at i went to the gym as i do on six like just because it's like just because the wind chills and the negatives like doesn't mean i'm not gonna go to the gym dude that yeah. sucked ass. that was that was really time. bad didn't have a good time that was awful um you're still getting there though any, still getting in there we haven't had any power grid shutdowns yet that's the main thing that's I what i was like at least you still got power uh right now how's uh how's your winter up there i've heard it's uh oh, still strange the uh the past week i think we've had a high of like 11 degrees and, he, oh. and on the day it was 11 degrees it was like oh it's kind of nice like okay kind of yeah no. don't need this like jacket yeah, uh yeah no. but it was literally like negative like five degrees basically like every day um, speaking of gym and and weather um i actually went to go i was so inspired by uh you always talking about how you uh you pump hard uh peloton with uh with Arios. Yeah. Uh, I actually took Arios to my gym yesterday. Whoa. You like met IRL? Cool. Yeah. We, That's I sick. Mean, we do, we do live like, you know, 40 minutes away from each other. So yeah. I invited Arios. It's a bring a friend week basically for our, uh, oh, for our yeah. gym where like you can bring them in for, you know, for, you know, the whole week, whenever yeah. they want for free. They don't got to do yeah. anything. That's awesome. And, it was a rowing day, so we did a lot of rowing and jump roping. And my bro, Arios is built different. 
It's hard to keep up with him on Pelly, man. I'll tell you that. Well, I'm not going to keep up with that dude, and I know I'm not. But, but this dude, like, Arios is pretty like um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a little uh, aloof. You know, mm-hmm. he's a he's a big he's a big uh, you know a big gentle himbo. Yeah. And so like he's fucking pumping. He's rowing. Yeah, he's and, getting it. And my coach is like, my coach is like, oh, we're just, we're just, like, you just gotta do five hundred per set, big guy, before you go to the jump rope. And he's like, oh 500 shit, five oh, hundred per right. set, god damn, yeah, five hundred meters of rowing. Oh, I thought like five hundred poles. Nah, five hundred meters, like the equivalent okay. of. So, I see. So, I never yeah, the, rowed before. Rowing's rowing's a full body workout, so yeah. But uh, yeah, it was like I think the what was the rep scheme? It was like um. It was like they do like a lot of warm ups, like more like like warm up sets, basically. Yeah. So like you'll do like a demo of the workout, and then the workout is like twenty minutes, twenty to thirty minutes of just like you know high intensity workout. Yeah. And so it was like um it was like five hundred meters, uh, That's and then twenty five uh twenty five jumpy ropies. For Arios, it was double unders because he's built different. Yeah. And so like, like you do you do 500 row, you do uh, a jump rope set, that's one set. And you got to get as many as you can in that 20 minute uh time cap. Okay. So Aeros is a beast. Yeah. Everyone, Whenever, ev- go ahead. Everyone was saying like what to like oh okay, how many reps did you get? And everyone's like new with the reps and Aeros just like uh, I I I don't know. I just went. I just went. <laughs> I I, just... I you said go and I didn't stop. <laughs> God uh it was funny he like hit me up one of these days after our peloton he was like hey like what size shoe are you in a biking shoe and i went what do you mean and I, like don't you already have a pair and he goes no and i go wait so you mean to tell me you've been unclipped in the peloton basically just yep. kind of riding raw dog yep. we're like it's super different when you're not strapped into the bike because then like you can pull full force with your legs and you won't like you know your leg won't come off essentially um so we started pelotoning and dude, like I can keep up with Arios for like the first like 15, 20 minutes. But yeah. as soon as like I finally start getting tired, he doesn't. And it's just like he still goes. And I end up like losing by like 30 points and something like that. He's just well, a freak, man. Well, that's like the same as me. Like I cause I was I was next to him rowing and like in the lead up sets, right? Where like we're doing like just the demo, like, you know, like we'll take like a 20 minute slow version of the workout mm-hmm. and i'm like oh, i i can keep up with this dude like let's see how long i can do this and then like 10 minutes into the warm-up demo i'm just like nope Shit, i can just i'm already done i'm already i'm i'm out so yeah he's this dude's built different and then we got chipotle after so that was nice oh that's always the best part is like the after workout chipotle i always really enjoy that uh, i love food dude if um, food's so good, why make me fat? Uh, speaking of loving stuff, uh, there's a game out right now that I think Mr. Fruit right now is loving. Uh, and we're actually going to play later right. uh, about two hours from now. Um, and you guys may have heard it. It's I don't know if it's taking the world by storm, uh, but it's at least taking like Twitch by storm, at least from what I've seen. Uh, Pow World is already off to a huge start. Uh, now, for those that don't know what Power World is, uh, Blue, do you mind explaining it? Because e- even I don't really know what it is. So Power World is essentially this uh, survival shooter set in a world where ordinarily it would be a pretty standard shooter. You know, like you got your guns, you got your resources, you, you know, you do your base building and shit and you go fight a bunch of bosses and stuff, uh, collect resources. But it is set in a Pokemon style world where you have a bunch of basically Pokemon uh, that can help you with, uh, you know, gathering that can help you in your boss fights. Uh, Even in base building, like I was watching fruit and like to get a freezer going to like, you know, preserve your food. Yeah. You can use a frost pal and put them next to the freezer. And that frost pal will like, you know, that's how you get the freezer working. So it's pretty cool. It's a cool concept. It's a, I mean, I mean, at its core, the TLDR, it's a survival uh, looter uh, F. It's it's just a survival shooter 
with Pokemon at its core design RPG element, right? So it's cool. I will say it's really funny. There are some straight up rips of Pokemon uh, designs. Like not one to one. Like they could take you court type shit. Uh, like it's changed just enough to where they really can't. But like, if you saw them, you'd be like, "Oh, that's Lycanroc. Uh, oh, that's Latios and Latios. Uh, oh, that's Salamence. I saw like I saw like a a, a sheep that looked like uh, one of the sheep Pokemon. Straight up Mareep. Uh, like not even not not even not even trying to. I mean, yeah, they try. Like they'll recolor it and like change aspects of it. But so, some of the designs are pretty blatant ripoffs. Yeah. Which is like I'm not like super against because honestly, like if you can't make bangers like Pokemon designs. That's one of the main reasons why I I fell out of love with Temtem is because you didn't like, like the designs. I remember you like hated Tem- them. Like Temtem is a good game with the most mid designs monster designs I've ever seen in my life. I like Temtem, but man, the Pokemon are just so just not it. But I uh, yeah. saw a bazooka being shot at a Pokemon. Like yeah, I'm, pretty... I'm at the Steam store right now. Like. Because we're playing it later. Silly. We're gonna have to throw up some footage of it, like on the, on the, uh, on the YouTube version, because it's yeah, it's really hard to describe. But uh, yeah, some it's it's pretty cool. I, I'm interested in trying it. It is funny because like one of their main like, uh, like flagship Pokemon is like that big yellow. It literally, it's literally just Totoro, but like big and yellow. Uh huh. And it's like. It, it's just funny man like they are, they just they're kind of like if we can't like make something iconic let's just like kind of like follow along let's like hey uh can i copy your homework yeah but like change it a little bit so it's not obvious um are they called pals they are called pals yes okay yeah i um like i'm watching from the steam store and it looks like they're at one point it looks like a conveyor belt of is like working and all the pokemon are working the or pals are working the conveyor belt i you you know some uh some funny shit with them yeah so i have an article here uh it says ahead of pal world's launch developer pocket pair insisted it's definitely not a scam uh, the assurance came in the yeah, wake of games yeah. like Disastrous the day before, which was fueled by distrust between players and early access developers on Steam. Because I think, what, this is on Game Pass and right now? So if you have yeah. Xbox Game Pass, I don't think you even need to pay for it right now. Um, so if you have that, uh, try it out. Um, uh, Power World started with a small team of four people. With Craftopia, we realized the potential that survival crafting games had, but as we continued development, we realized new possibilities. How much fun would it be if you went on an adventure, lived, and built a pair a base with pals who had their own quirks and personalities? With this in mind, we have worked hard to develop this game for the past three years. Uh, developers who sympathize with Power World gathered one, uh, one after another, and the scale of the game grew beyond whatever we imagined. Power World starts from here. Uh, they explain uh, Pocket Pair. Uh, they explain it. Uh, it's including a PvP arena, major building system updates, a raid boss to fight that guild members must gather and cooperate to defeat, and trading pals with other players in the world too. I also saw a clip on Twitter uh, that there are shiny pals. Apparently, I don't know if you know that. It wouldn't be. Uh, it wouldn't be a, a. It wouldn't be a monster collecting game if they were in alternate color versions. Yeah, I, I don't know if it was alternate color version. I just know he said it was way bigger than its like original form uh, type oh, of thing. Like an alpha um, pal. That's that's fair. Yeah. Um, uh, they also say we will continue to do our best to update the game in order to bring it one step closer to becoming a great game. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it, it, everyone is seem seeming to enjoy it. Uh, I do have here um, an article that explains how close these Pokemon are related to one another. Um, I'll kind of. Oh, scro- okay. Yeah, I'm going to kind of, on the podcast, I'm going to kind of scroll through, like, 
kind of what people are saying about them all looking kind of similar. They're, I linked it in the uh, main chat if you want to look. They're they're pretty close, man. Like like, th- like there's one that's like Galarian's mouth Meowth's face onto like uh, a a different Pokemon that's like purple. I forget what Pokemon that is. Um, it looks like. Uh, oh, like they take Meganium and just make Meganium stand on its legs and then yep, put, yep, 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 yep. and then they put like, um, Lilligant, they put like Lilligant's like headpiece on. Oh, the to... Lilligant one is a straight rip. Like that's, <laughs> like, I'm not convinced that's not traced. Um, like I'm not convinced that's not traced. The, yeah, the Cinderace one is pretty blatant too. Is that like the, the one the that rabbit? Looks... Oh, is okay. Yeah, and then there's one that's like uh, like a fox witch. Uh, fox. Witch. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, uh, let me see what they call this thing. Uh, yeah. Um. Oh, Brexin. Oh, yeah. Uh, Brexin, and then the her her full Evo is not called Brexin. It's um. And then there looks like a Lucario, but it's like an Egyptian version oh, of Lucario. It's, it's straight up Egyptian Lucario. It's not even. Uh, and then we have, uh, yeah, like I see the one where you said Latios and Latios, like that's literally just them combined. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's pretty close. Oh yeah. Del Fox. There we go. Del Fox. Yeah. Del Fox. That, that one's a straight rip. Um, yeah, we're, we're definitely throwing these up. You guys are going to see how close they are. The Meganium one. Yeah. It's just on all feet. The, the Decidui one, the, the, the owl with an arrow that's a straight rip like that's like bla- same color scheme and everything yeah the del fox is a straight rip it's lucario is egyptian lucario um yeah you had the luxray is almost a one-to-one yeah we'll uh we'll probably have our review of the game coming next week's podcast right now i think it literally just comes out like today um Yep, I think it does t- come out just today. Because it's been like early access, I think, and you had to have maybe like codes to access it and stuff. Um, but I mean, it looks really interesting. I do see here that PAL on Xbox doesn't have dedicated servers, limiting co-op to two to four players while Steam gets up to 32 players. Uh, so if you are able to play this on PC, um, I would definitely recommend to try and have this on PC. Um, but... Man, the more I think about this, the more this does seem fun. You know, it kind of combines all of our favorite aspects as a crew. You know, I love guns and shooting guns, and you guys love Pokemans. Uh, so I think it'll be, I think it'll be a ton of fun today. We'll probably be live, I think, in like the next like two hours or something like that, right after this yeah. podcast. Uh, so if you are live listening to this, make sure you fly on over into the uh, our Twitch channels uh, to uh, watch it. Uh, so yeah, Power World uh, will be coming uh, this uh, this I guess this week, but we'll have our full reviews going into next week. Um, yeah. Speaking of reviews, uh, some Halo reviews um, have come in, um, and um, one of the things that came up, uh, how do you say his name? Blue Pablo Sh- Sh- Shearbeer. Pablo Schreiber. Schreiber. Um, says uh, the sex scene in last uh, last season was a huge mistake. Uh, he came out and said, um, let me see about the sex scene. He said a lot of stuff this week in interviews. So I have a lot of quotes from him that explain everything that's wrong about this show. Uh, the decision to make the connection between Make and John a romantic connection was a huge mistake. I felt it was a huge mistake at the time, and I argued against it and fought against it. But who? Uh, but I am who I am, and I don't write the scripts. I only give my opinion, and it wasn't listened to. So it seems like he kind of understands what makes Master Chief Master Chief. Um, I'll be honest; I didn't even watch that episode where he had sex with some chick, because um, I literally just watched the last episode because someone said it was actually okay. Master Chief fucks. Um, but this is where, like, I had a really big issue with a uh, quote that he had. Um, he had a quote that said and explained why Master Chief doesn't always wear his helmet. Uh, he says, you're not going to be able to bring an audience along in a long form story without having an access to a character's face, Ooh. which tells you what they're feeling, how they think about everything. The access to a character's emotional life over the course of time 
is it what makes you empathize and connect with the character? I'm sorry, but it's the only choice for long form storytelling in television. Well, I would say to anybody that who disagrees with that, I totally respect that opinion, but it's pretty basic place to start when you're talking about making a television show quality. No, my ball. It's crazy to me because they literally saw them make a new character in Mandalorian that took the literal world by storm. We didn't see this dude's face until like, when did we, it wasn't until like the last episode, I think. Right. When like the robot is like, I'm not a robot. I'm a living person. Like you can. Yes. He, and he took his helmet off for like, literally it was like like, 20 seconds. It's old, but like, yeah, it was 20 seconds of the whole. And like the time that like he only takes his helmet off at like really specific key moments. Yeah. And like, imagine the pogness I would have. And like everyone else would have that are halo fans. Yeah. I put, oh shit. That's the master. She's face. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, but, it's like they just made a character in Mando that we cared about a ton. And he didn't take his helmet off until the last episode of the first season. And then, and then we had, like and but you have master chief who people are already connected to you don't even have to work that hard to build this character because people know it yeah and to say like oh you have to to build a character like you have to like have its their helmet off it's like they just wrote they literally just wrote a character that had their helmet on all the time that was completely new and they did it perfectly and you're telling me these writers can't write Master Chief, one of the most iconic video game characters of all time, having his helmet on for most of the season. Not even most of the season, like at least like a good chunk because most of the time in the series, it's just Pablo Schreiber playing like a cosplay Master Chief. For sure. Um, I, I, I hate that. It basically is admitting like, yeah, I'm really bad at uh, voice acting and... Uh, we have a really bad writing team that doesn't make you care about this character at all. That's like what I read that as it's basically just like throwing himself under the bus and his writer writers under the bus. Like I would understand if we hadn't seen a show or some sort of like form of entertainment that we didn't see somebody's face and we could understand 100%. what they're going through and all those sorts of things. But we literally saw that with the Mandalorian we just saw it. And you literally have so much source material for us to care about master chief. You know, you could do some sort of like, visions of his like childhood you know you could do something that the games don't really get to touch on because it doesn't have the time and missions and stuff exactly you could have like the cortana type of thing and you can have like why he's a stoic fucking dickhead all the time you know like why he's just a killing machine and like was he programmed to be a killing machine but instead we get butt cheeks we get him smashing chicks um hey they were nice butt cheeks to be fair yeah it's just a mess um and it it does not get me excited for this newest season at all. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, I I hope it's good, but it's it's like um and like I, I respect the dude for you know defending the team that worked on it, but it's like like at some point you got to be like, hey, like this is like this is not really Halo. This is this is like a story in Halo clothes yeah it just it just makes no sense to me um i don't know everything that comes out of the show it's always the actor guy saying something was a mistake or that wasn't a mistake we're we think we're right about it it's just i really like can't stand the show it is weird uh, but as a Halo fan, I think I'll be there. You know, I will be there for episode one because like, be the, no the fall of Reach, the fall of Reach does no look really what. cool. Um, I think it's really interesting. Um, they did have a shot though where it was like it almost looked like Clone Wars esque, where it's like Master Chief standing in front of like an army, basically. And it's like, how did Reach lose when we have a gazillion army? Like, what the hell happens to the point where it's not going to happen? Yeah. <sighs> Hey, if Fall of Reach, if they mess up Fall of Reach, uh, I th- like. I mean, that's pretty much it for the show. I'm surprised it wasn't already kind of it for the show, but I think a lot of people saw like the last episode and like had a lot of hope for two. So, but if you um, miss up Reach, man, whew. 
Kind of some quick topics. I don't know if you had any other topics, but we can talk about before we go to Q. I did have I did have one real quick topic, and this one yeah, was actually here. really funny uh, about the about Ubisoft. So Ubisoft recently came out. One of the Ubisoft executives um, said that when in regard to subscriptions, they said gamers need to get comfortable with not owning your games. Um, in Wait, one really? Of their quotes, and one of their quotes is that one of the things we saw is that gamers are used to a little bit like DVD having and owning their games. That's the consumer shift that needs to happen. And it's like, whoa, <sighs> like that was pretty crazy. Uh, he goes on to explain that not owning a game doesn't mean you lose your progress and that you still keep the time you invested and in what you've built, even though you don't have a physical copy to stick on your shelf. Tremblay also says that he understands the gamers perspective when it comes to owning games but claims that services like ubisoft plus will allow them to access their games when you feel like um yeah i mean he's a he's the director of subscriptions as well so it's 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 a why do they even have that me. title yeah that's what i'm saying like, like why do you even need that's not even a real job like that's like one of those fake jobs you make to get in through the back you know what i mean like yeah um I mean, Ubisoft pretty much this, I mean, uh, several, I mean, Ubisoft in general is pretty, is pretty forward with like the cloud being like the only way to like buy games. I hate the cloud. Do you save stuff on the cloud? Well, I mean, everything like Steam cloud. What's Steam like, cloud? That's how all your games progress gets saved. My guy, you think your you think your game progress is saved on your computer? Yeah, kind of. Nah nothing all your progress for all your steam games even like shit like elden ring that's single player that's all, all that safe stuff's on the cloud i think that's good i think that's good what my issue is is basically renting games from a server and playing it through that and never having true ownership of your game because like with steam right you buy you know game. It's, it's in your you could play them offline like yeah. you not all of them you can play offline but like if in the event you don't yeah. have internet like that game is still offline my yeah. issue with subscription and like online only games is this is exactly what the ubisoft devs want they like you need to have internet to play these games like you don't own these games even single player games like assassin's creed are gonna you know start having like online checks to see like when you start the game you know what i mean so yeah and like, if you don't have it, it's like, oop, we couldn't verify your key for this game. And it's like, ah, uh, pretty gross, man. But um, yeah, I mean, they they want to have like a fully digital future. Um, you have obviously like Game Pass is also kind of pushing this, uh, and that you like games only subscription service. And don't get me wrong, Game Pass is amazing, but yeah, they you know, do it like, right with Game Pass. But like, you know, if you lose your game pass, like you lose access to those titles, like as soon as, you know, you don't have game pass anymore. So it's like, it's a double edged sword. Um, so they're kind uh, of acting actually, it as like a Netflix type of thing. Like we subscribe exactly. to Ubisoft exactly. store yep, and yep. Ubisoft store is like, Hey, like exactly. You, yes. you can play uh kingdom hearts, uh, but like you don't own kingdom hearts and like, say like, Oh, uh, this game's going away this month, and it's like, wait, so I can't play this game anymore? Like after it goes away, it's definitely way different than like TV or television, uh, or television, TV or movies that like you don't rent or stream. You know what I mean? Like it's definitely not a shift that I think gamers are going to be making anytime soon. It's um, I mean, unfortunately, it's not really in our hands. Like that's the sad part. Is like if if games just turn into subscribe to Ubisoft Plus. Uh, this game is only available on Xbox Game Pass. Like that's that's unfortunately like part of the future. Yeah. Of, but some people uh, are fighting back against that. Some people inside the industry themselves. Oh. The the founder of Larian, the developer of Baldur's Gate Three, said. You won't find our games on a subscription service, he says. After Ubisoft forecasts the future of players not owning games, well, that's good. He says subscription models will always end up being cost-benefit analysis exercise intended to maximize profits. 
The CEO and founder of Baldur's Gate 3, developer Larian Studios, weighed in on recent prophecies from Ubisoft directors. Gamers will likely grin and bear a subscription model future. Sven Vink adds to the discussion on Twitter in a thread this morning. He says, whatever the future of games look like, content will always be king. But it's going to be a lot harder to get good content if subscription becomes the dominant model and a select group gets to decide what goes to market and what not. Direct from developer to players is the way. What a... F- what a Chad. Kind of Giga that's Chad. My that's my game that's my of the year, Giga goat. Chad. That's, hey, that's why Baldur's Gate 3 has probably made more money than like eight Ubisoft games combined in the past like five years, baby. Uh, he goes on to say... Getting aboard to okay a project fueled by idealism is almost impossible, and idealism needs room to exist, even if it can lead to disaster. We are already all dependent on a select group of digital distribution platforms, and discoverability is brutal. Should those platforms all switch to subscription, it'll become savage. Uh, it's um, it, it I I definitely agree with him. Um, and it's tough because like we are. We are, we are, we do already kind of, we're already like got like a foot in the pool of, yeah. you know, subscription based being the wave. Um, but I think it's just kind of like the, the point is like, like to make games only based on a subscription is a slippery slope because then you won't really have like, because then everyone's just going to start doing subscription based services and you're yeah. not going to be able to directly buy the game you're not going to be able to just like have it in your library, like on steam. And obviously like, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon, but like with big publishers like Ubisoft, uh, obviously you have Xbox game pass, you know, obviously the intention of game pass is not to be like, Oh, like you guys subscribe to us, get these games. Obviously the intention of game pass right now is, Hey, here's a good way to like get some get as many games as possible without like, you know, having to like deal with all the, you know, try all these cool games. Like the intention of Game Pass is like, hey, try out all these cool games you might not have been able to play uh, before. Yeah. Uh, whereas Ubisoft is not quite as uh, nice. It's quite literally, uh, if you want to play our games, you're going to have to subscribe. You got to rent it. Yeah, you got to rent it. Uh, Swen continues. In such a world, by definition, the preference of the description service will determine what games get made. Trust me, you really don't want that. I respect that for many developers, subscription services present an opportunity to make their game. I don't have an issue with that. I just want to make sure the other ecosystem doesn't die because it's valuable. Makes sense. Uh, Chad I think developer the dude's, again. I think the dude's super Chad. It's it's like a, like for me, right? Based. MMOs. Like for me, MMOs. There's no way for me to just own an MMO, and I understand. No. Like he's he, he he understands that too because it's like um yeah like there's no way for me to say like a subscription based like payment like you do with uh final fantasy is different than like this plan because like to play the game i gotta pay because you know i mean server costs for an mmo are not cheap and to do the things i do on an mmo you know i you could play the game single player at this point because yoshi p has like really driven home like i want this game to be able to be played yeah you know even if you're not really a social person but like the whole point of mmos is to be is interconnectivity at all times yeah and it's always like an ever-growing world like it's always constantly updated and like ubisoft isn't going to update assassin's creed black flag you know what i mean exactly exactly um and so um it's but like you know there's the inverse of subscription where you have ubisoft essentially wanting to have a netflix or disney plus version where you get games yeah. Which, I mean, you know, pros and cons, just in the same way that Game Pass is dope, but, like, it's all about the intention, right? Like, mm-hmm. like Ubisoft wants to do this not because they want their games to succeed and they want, like, their, like, oh, discover all these cool games you may not have been able to play uh, on Ubisoft Plus. It's more so, like, hey, pay us to play these games. Um, also, you, like, you just want one of these games? No uh if you lose your subscription you're not playing that game ever like get fucked yeah that is kind of insane it's just a it's 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 obviously like not like the end of the world and this is giga first world problems but it's just like consumer rights as a as a are are getting like weaker and weaker especially in the video game sphere you see it in, in everyday sphere like i think it's insane that like i buy a ring doorbell okay 
Wow, I have this ring doorbell down. Well, I installed it. Now I have to pay a subscription fee every month for, for me to use it. Like, why don't I buy it? And because I bought it, now I get to use it. You know what I mean? There's a subscription fee behind everything these days. Uh, because they know they can make you pay for it. Like, why give them a ring doorbell in the price of $60 when we can charge them $50 and then charge them every year $15 for them to use it? You know what I mean? Like, that shit is insane to me. And we've lost it, like you said, basically everywhere other than video games. And it makes me sad that it may even come into video games now. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I, I love I love the physical copy of games, but I haven't owned a physical copy in a while. And I mean, realistically, right, I do have to say, like, do we really own any of the digital games that we have right now? And I mean, you know, realistically, no. But it's still to but the I can point. Sort of refund them. You know what I mean? Like, it's not what? that. I mean, yeah, if I don't like it. But like most of the games in my library, like I can play offline. Uh, most of the games, uh, you know, most of my games are online only and like online only games that are designed to be like, you know, always online and playing with homies. Like, hell yeah. Like I get that, but it, it is kind of spooky to think about a future where we have Netflix of games. And like, that's, that's the main source of buying your games, which I don't, I don't really like, man. What what's the last physical game you bought? I'm trying to think of the last actual physical game I bought. Now this is where I fuck heavy with Nintendo because the last physical game I bought, Scarlet and Violet, baby, Scarlet okay. and Violet. Yeah, it mine must have been a Nintendo game too. Then maybe like Super Mario 64 and this the they had like a Sunshine Pack or something like that. I forget what it was. I think that's a lot. Oh, it's like Super 64. You got like Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and like Mario Galaxy. All on like one little cartridge. And they had it for like a limited time for physical. I think that's the last. I think it's the last physical game I bought. And that was like two years ago. Yeah. Um, I didn't know about this. Apparently there's an Indiana Jones game coming out. Um, and they just announced that Troy Baker is going to be the voice of Indiana Jones. Oh, nice. Yeah, so NFT guy, um, you know. I didn't hey, he, hey, he's he made a mistake. Himself. He made a mistake, and he did say, "Hey, I didn't know about all this shit, y'all." Like that's on me. That's on me, fam. I mean, <laughs> I not just, my favorite guy in the world, but he did. You know, he he did say sorry. He did say sorry. Um, okay, let me pull up Q and A here. We got a good amount here. Uh, space with our first question says, Rob, where's the Fortnite festival content? Is it, it's like rock band and OG guitar controllers are compatible with them too. Uh, they aren't though. Uh, cause you don't strum, you just press the button. So like, sure. Is it the same? No, actually not really. I think the strum and like hammer ons and pull offs, like are a really big part of guitar hero and rhythm games. Um, and I also think it's batshit insane that Fortnite makes you pay $5 for one song. That's fucking insane. To put that in comparison, I have like, um, I think 515 songs on my clone here, okay? That are all from Rock Band, Free Charts, Guitar Hero 2, Guitar Hero 3, everything. If I paid $5 for all of those... Uh, that would be like $2,500 worth of songs on my clone hero. Um, I'm never in a million years paying for a song on that game because $5 is just insane for uh, a charted song that's even not even that hard because I just have to press the buttons. Bull turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a way better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor or a worse alternative. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume. They look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in the bad habit is wrong, so instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from the habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning, flavored air device that does just that. The feel of the Fume is so nice, you can tell it's quality materials. It's awesome. You gotta try the new Solano Fume. It's made with premium walnut barrel and an onyx-coated mouthpiece that is so much softer. Start the year off right with the good habit by going to tryfume.com slash gg and get the journey pack today. Fume is giving our listeners 10% off when they use the code gg 
to help make starting the good habit that much easier. Thank you, Fume, for sponsoring this podcast. I was, was going to say, Dado and I completed the Endless Setlist uh, of Rock Band. We sat and played Rock Band 2's playlist uh, for about six hours straight. And it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Uh, what That's were you saying? Go, baby. Yo, where's Rob's fitness update? Uh, end of the month. That's when we'll like weigh oh, I ourselves. It was weekly. No, yeah, we'll have it at the I end was, of the I month. Was like, I was like... Damn. No, end right. of the month. You got to give me time to lose Rob. the weight and stuff. Yeah, you got to give me they're time to lose Rob the weight and stuff. Month, but they're if you go Rob. into the fitness journey uh, in the Discord, you'll see all my workouts that I've been doing in there. Uh, I have been sticking with it. I've been working out like four days a week. Uh, oh, um, I gotta I'm going get... to... Go Guess ahead. what? I'm gonna, th- you know what? I'm gonna throw my ba- my hand in the barrel. I'm gonna start. Let's go. The- I'm gonna start throwing my workouts that I do. Would love to see that. Would love to see that in a little. F- yeah, would love to see, see that in there. You guys can see a little uh, piece of what I do every day. To that's been keeping me going to the gym. So yeah, that'd be sick, dude. Would love to see that. Um, Lumberlord. Uh, oh no no no. An unknown source says, "Do you guys enjoy amusement parks? If so, do you have a favorite ride?" <sighs> I'm not uh, like, um, I'm not crazy into amusement parks. I would say Texas has some really good amusement parks too. We that's the worst part is we have goaded amusement parks. We have Six Flags Fiesta Texas down here is massive. Like, I I've never been into rides. I'm gonna be honest. I've okay. I've been on a couple roller coasters and it's just not really my thing. I don't really like being on a on a death cart. You know Mario Kart, love it. Uh, roller coasters not my vibe so okay. um my favorite ride is always the like the the the, the river tubes where they have like that little oh, every every you, place has it uh, you get kind of wet or soaked depending on where you're, you're kinda, sitting you kind of just vibe down the river on your little tube and, and that's that's my favorite ride. so um the, so unfortunately, the music parks here in like Colorado are pretty whack. Other than Waterworld, Waterworld is really cool, uh, but the Six Flags here is ass. Um, so I would say, yeah, I love amusement parks. Like if you go to Magic Mountain in California, it's like one of like the roller coaster capitals. Um, it has so many, um, and they're probably my favorite rides. Probably like X Two, and for those that don't know, X Two is a roller coaster, but as you, your seats spin as you ride the roller coaster. So, like, you go down and, like, your seat will, like, spin and flip you as you, like, are flipping yourself. It's really cool. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, it's uh, awesome. Uh, I, I, I love roller coasters. I, I've i never been, like, afraid of them. Actually, that's not true. I thought they were really scary when I was a kid. I'll never forget. I was about probably, like, eight or nine, and um, Six Flags – or not Six Flags. Uh, California Adventure had just opened up at Disney World, and they had a roller coaster there called Scream in California. And I remember my dad literally dragging me by my arm and me screaming and crying. And then I was like, maybe I won't be tall enough. I get to the thing, I'm tall enough. And at that point, I start hysterically crying. They forced me onto it. Oh, dude, no. And, and afterwards, I was like, that was the sickest thing ever. Let's do it again. Um, so that's how my love of roller coasters started. Um, and I love roller coasters. The, the, the scarier, the faster, the better, man. Um, like the new Tron ride at um, uh, Disney World was really sick. Um, Lumberlord says, is there anything you're embarrassed for not knowing? Example, something like not knowing how to ride a bike, etc. cetera. Um, I, something um... I'm embarrassed. I don't know how to Photoshop. I think it's really embarrassing that I don't know how to make thumbnails or Photoshop. I really hate that about myself and I want to try and learn um, how to do those sorts of things. Um, yeah, I, I would say in the content creation space, I, I feel very stupid that I don't know how to do Photoshop and I'm embarrassed that I don't know how to photo- do Photoshop because everybody else around me knows how to do it. Is that really embarrassing though? You don't. Yeah, do especially in your, when you're a content creator, I think. Uh, I, mean, I think I it's a skill every content person. creator should have. I don't, I don't think that's embarrassing personally. I think you're fine. I will say I'm embarrassed. Uh, back in the day, I was embarrassed I couldn't ride a bike, and then I learned how to ride a bike, and it was pretty chill. Um, what am I right now? I'm a little embarrassed. I don't know how to efficiently clean my shower. 
Um, I don't know if there's like a, a amazing way to do it, but like all I know is like right now I'm just kind of like toilet easy. I got my toilet bowl cleaner. I got my fucking Lysol wipes. And they make it easy with the toilet bowl cleaner. They like make it kind of hooked, so you just squeeze yeah, and it gets it's under wicked. there. If I got to clean, like, uh, there's all these fucking Swiffer wet jets and shit, easy mop. But, like, with the shower, it's, like, daunting to me. So, I just kind of, like, I just kind of, like, use some of the shower soap or whatever. Use yeah. some of my, like, Fabuloso or something and just kind of, like, you know, just spray it down. I don't know. It's probably an easy Google, but, like, I just kind of, like, I just kind of YOLO it. I don't know if I'm mm-hmm. cleaning my shower efficiently, but I try. How are you? Are you, are you like, the are you the premier... How do you feel about your your cleaning of your uh, um, toiletry areas, Rob? Or is that more so handled uh, by someone a little more skilled than you? No. So um, we break down the patriarchy here. Um, Sydney hates cleaning the toilets or like cleaning like the bathroom type area. Doesn't say she doesn't do it because um, she has and literally just did. Um, but. I, I know she hates it, so I'll take the responsibilities of cleaning the toilet and cleaning the showers and stuff like that. Um, I forget what it's called, but it's like this green kind of dust. The powder? Yeah, it's like a green kind of powder. Yes, you put, yes. And then, like, you just fucking, ah, you just take, like, a, we, we have oh, a scrub daddy. Yeah, oh. you have a scrub daddy. Scrub daddies are pog. They're like these little smiley face things, and you just get in there with them and they basically try and get everything. I mean, our fucking showers are from like 1900s. So it's literally like impossible to get some of those stains out. Um, but yeah, I, right. I do try and make it as clean as possible whenever I do yeah. decide to deep clean my bathroom. I was going to toss that powder out and then I just like let it sit for a while and then I'll just like spray it down with the shower head. So I should probably start. Sc- yeah. You got to like really get in there with that green uh, dust. So, like it's easy to scrub a toilet. It's easy to like mop my floors. Like, but like seeing like a big ass shower that I have to scrub, I'm just like, huh? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to, you know, I got to start doing it. Uh, Caraxi, uh, or it could be a Kara the 11th. I don't know. Um, what or get care of the twelfth? Uh, what game universe would make a banger series, and what series would you would make a banger game? Okay, that's a good question. Also, congratulations, Robin Dado, for the Bladder of Steel achievement. Thank you. Um, uh, okay, we'll start with the first one. Banger series that would make a wait. What game universe would make a banger series? Okay, we'll start with that. Metal Gear Solid, baby. What? Which one did you say? Metal Gear Solid. Oh, Metal Gear Solid. That Easy. is a good one. I'm still saying it. Been saying it for years. Still waiting for a Metal Gear Solid show. I think if you did it right, and we're saying a series here, not movie, uh, Assassin's Creed. If you could do it correctly and do it right, you could make it work. That that series is asking for a long form. Yeah, like media you can, format. You can do it. Not like, Michael Fassbender. Yeah, like, I don't know how you, like, you know, how you get people in the door, but you already have all the Assassin's people in the door. And, you know, I think that is one of the coolest stories and one of the greatest narratives in gaming. You know, it's a little confusing, but you can, you know, dumb it down for a series and just be like, hey, I, we need to get your memories from an assassin of your ancestors in fucking Roman times. And then the next season, they're like, hey, we got to go to Viking times. Like, I just think it's just awesome now um for the latter um a series that would make a banger game that one's a little tough um a series that would make a banger game i'm trying to like i always thought like a like you know how how telltale did their game of thrones like for a couple seasons or something i think they did like one telltale game for game of thrones I think if you did like a narrative driven Game of Thrones RPG esque type game, I think that'd be really sick. It would be extremely hard to pull off, but it would be fucking awesome. I w- I I think um I don't think we've really gotten like a fully fully realized Avatar: The Last Airbender game, and even Korra. Like they're always featured in games, but like that art style. Like that would make like in in the style of like a uh, you know like DBZ Kakarot or like like a Lethal Company type look like just you know 
way better graphic type, but like that same kind yeah, like of like cell shaded, cell shaded. Yeah. Um, you know, we could. I'm still waiting on that that avatar, that adventure, that avatar adventure game. That would be sick. Um, that would be my number one pick because like like a deep combat system with bending, I would. Ooh, I would cream a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. Um. Uh, Strachan says, "What is the trend that made you feel old for the first time?" I think Skibbity Toilet really did it for me. I love Skibbity Toilet, dude. What is wrong I, with him? I just don't. What get is it. wrong with this dude? Oh, I, so you're not an expert on Giat, my boy? No, I'm not an expert. That also makes me feel old. Homie is Rizless, not caked up at all. No toilet, no Skibbity. I'm old. That's just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That what you just said right there. Uh, it was funny because I I was at a yesterday I had a bunch of Voodoo Ranger meetings about like the year and all that kind of stuff and like meeting other creators and um, we were doing like this film thing and like shooting and basically it was like just have a conversation and we'll like film you guys talking and we'll just like remove the audio we just want to make like you guys talking. And nobody was saying anything, so I went, do you guys know what Skibbity Toilet is? And everybody didn't know what Skibbity Toilet was. So I had to explain to them what Skibbity was, and they all just started feeling immediately old. So, and then <laughs> what you just said, no Skibbity Toilet, Gyat, or is Gyat like goddamn, like goddamn, or is Gyat like its own sort of thing? Honestly, Gyat is a feeling, my guy. I don't, <laughs> let me like look at the I exact. Say, damn. Like I think as yeah as God. Like I've always thought it as like you're saying God damn, just like yeah, damn. Like the origin of Giat uh apparently stands for get your act together. Giat is a slang term for god damn, and it's usually said in response to seeing an attractive woman. Daniel, Giat damn, what do you think? However See, like so it's just like God damn. But like sometimes like Giat is like a term also used by like like giat in hand my boy like about your like dick and balls so it's like giat can be like thought of as goddamn but like giat can also be like oh since when did you become an expert in giat like oh do you you can go get your giat out the toilet dude and it and like okay listen dude okay so i know it doesn't make sense but like but like trust me here it's basically saying like hey like uh, are you gonna hey like goddamn you gonna get your shit together my boy like why don't okay. you go outside to your car, pick up your giat at your toilet, get that shit in here in hand, bring it in here, and maybe you'll finally have some fucking <laughs> riz, bitch. Finally want to get caked up? Huh? Uh, finally want to get caked up big ass style? Or do you want to just sit over there with giat in hand looking stupid? I can't, wait this motherfucker. See, I can't wait to see you all this at Joey today. Um, <laughs> what uh what about you, Blue? What made you feel what trend made you feel old? <laughs> I did that. Like, obviously don't, you don't feel old you, you you seem to keep up with the trends these kids are doing these days i don't think i don't think anything i don't think any trend has made me feel old what what does make me feel old is the music is like when uh is like when um like some song comes on that i used to listen to a lot or from like some band that i loved and there was like oh wow like classic music is so good and i'm like <laughs> classic music there was this tiktok where it was like um I don't know. Like some dude was like, Oh dude, I found like, like, Oh, my dad let me like borrow some of his vinyls of some of his classic records. And like, I, I took him, I took a lot of them for a spin. It's like the shins, uh, fucking the strokes. Um, if like, um, your typical oh like mid two thousands rock mid type. Mid two thousand, like yeah. Interpol fucking. I believe in a thing called love. Arcade fire. Beautiful um like uh and i'm just over here like ugh, classics <laughs> uh, uh Mies says is there any game that you wish you could go back uh to replay from time to time oh is there a game that you go back and replay from time to time for me it's kingdom hearts 2 and super mario world you guys are my fave man it's really hard for me to go back and like replay a game um but if i ever do it is like kingdom hearts 2 or kingdom hearts 1 um games i I'm not like the type to really go back and play games a ton. Yeah, me, me too. I'm not like a comfort gamer. Like where if like, I, I do, know. it's I think the most recent game I went back to go play was Black and White Two, uh, with Pokemon. Okay, but I don't really go back like I used to. 
back in the day, I did play like Metal Gear Solid games over. Um, I did play like God, I could barely remember at this point, but yeah, no, no, like nowadays, no. I, I, yeah. the last time I went to go back and play a game over was Black and White Two. And that was like, like two years ago. Like I'll go back and play like Slay the Spire again, but like Slay the Spire is different every time I play it. You know what I mean? It's not this. It's like a roguelike, so it's always different when I play it. Um, Stredrin says, "Do you guys collect anything, or have you wanted to start a collection?" They say I collect uh, pins and Pokemon cards. Fuck me, I couldn't tell you what I don't collect. I have so many. I I love collecting figurines. I have a big ass blue eyes white dragon in the back right here with me. Um, I love collecting um, like uh, like life size shit models. I have a uh, Thancred's gun blade from Final Fantasy fourteen in the back. That shit cost me way too much money. Um, I collect a fuckload of cards already. Like I collect Pokemon cards. I collect Yu Gi Oh cards because I love them. Um, and then I have a I have a pretty big vinyl collection at this point. So I just. I collect a lot of fucking things and I'm also, I'm entering, I'm entering my, I'm entering my, my, um, dirty thirties, my feminine urges arc. Oh, uh, where I want plushies nonstop. I want to fill my room with plushies. So now in addition to figurines, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, really cool statues, uh, life-size, uh, replicas of things that I love now. I want plushies. So I'm fucked. Uh, I don't really collect much of anything, actually. Uh, I used to collect shoes, and then my shoes l- finally got to the point where it's like, I literally have every shoe I could want. Because I-, I wear my shoes. I don't just, like, have them like Dado does, like, on a wall or anything like that. Like, I like to wear all my shoes. So I have, like, a rotation of, like, six or seven pairs of sneakers that I like to wear. Um, but I do collect uh, old N64 uh, games. Uh uh, I don't collect a ton. I only have like the games that I love, and if I have like disposable income at the time when I'm at Games Ahoy and I see a uh, a game that is in decent con- decent shape and looks good, so I have two of my favorite games of all time right here in Banjo Kazooie and Zelda um, for the N64. Um, and I will probably only collect old N64 games. I do have a Halo Two disc up there. That's uh, but that's literally because Halo 2 literally started my love of gaming. And, like, I feel like I wouldn't be here without Halo 2. Um, so, yeah, I don't really collect too much of things anymore. Um, but if I did, it would be these N64 um, still-in-the-box type games. But these are, that's like, like they're not, like, like they have been opened before. So, oh, dude, like, cardboard on an N64 game, man. There's. Did you just open it? Well, there's nothing like it. I mean, it's already been opened. Like, oh, okay. I bought it, like, open. Like, oh. But, like, it's so cool, like, how these games used to come in. Like, Yeah, they went hard. Doesn't that just make you feel old? Like, just seeing that right there. And then, like, oh, nice, uh, has its cool little, uh, oh. little gaming manual. Even, like, the N64 manual. It's just really cool. Uh, it just makes me feel like... Like, there's just nothing like touching the cardboard of an old N64 game. It's it. just the best. Yeah. Um, let me pull up this next question here while I put this away. Um, next question here we have is from Ha. It says, what is your favorite slash least favorite exercise to do at the gym? Uh, military press. Uh, I have really bad shoulders. So like I my my shoulders literally popping as I do this. Uh so I would say shoulder press. Both my shoulders are really bad. Um so I normally tend to not do many so- shoulder exercises. Um uh, my least favorite let me think. My least favorite is probably the overhead squat. Um so an overhead squat is where you have a barbell above your head uh and you pretty much have it like your arms fully extended. And you squat it. I mean, you squat it while having it above your head. And there's always something kind of. <sighs> I'm still learning to like try to get comfortable with like basically having weight. Yeah. Like basically it's an intimidating on my blind, lift. Basically on my blind side. Um. Like it's fu- like when it when you pull it off, it feels great. But it's like <sighs> I don't know, man. Squatting any heavy weight 
overhead is spooky. Like I could do back squats. I could do front squats. Like those are, those are great. I love those. I could do, you know, I could do lunges. I could do, um, you know, weighted lunges, you know, front rack lunges easy. Like I love those, but when it comes to like the squat snatch, which is like a, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Or the, yeah. Or just the overhead squat. Like that's, that's spooky for me. So that's my least favorite. Just cause, not, not cause it's like incredibly difficult. Cause like I'll do it and I'll do it. Okay. But it's my least favorite because like I still have such a long way to go, and it's it's still kind of spooky doing it. Uh, oh, it also has favorite on there as well. Uh, power cleans. I love power cleans. Oh my god! Uh, I, lo- I love a good. Power I clean. fucking love power cleans. Yeah, power cleans make you feel like a badass. My especially favorite when is- I used to throw up weight, bro. Ugh. My favorite is the my favorite's a clean and jerk. Oh, see, clean and jerk is too much on my shoulders. Like, cause you I have to hold it jerk. there. Ah, that's your, too much what's for your, me. What's your what's your what's your max power clean, Rob? Oh, dude, back in the day, it was pro- right now. Probably, like, if you were telling me like max a power clean right now, my technique would probably be really bad. But I could do like one sixty five, one seventy, something damn, like that. God damn. Well, it's only because like when I do my power cleans, I do it really, really correct. You know, my form on a power clean is tremendous, like right here. But then like I will bring it all the way back down here for like a front squat. Like I don't like I won't bring it to like here. I'll bring it all the way back down and then like front squat it. Sure, if you will. I mean, I make it my technique was so crazy that that's that's what I loved about it, because like. Back in high school, I could do, I did Juggernaut one time. This is what we used to name our power cleans back in the day. Because we had a red weight. The red was 45s. Uh, I think blue was 35. Yellow was 25. And then greens was 10. So if you did a 45 and a 10, that was Christmas. That You could do Christmas. And then if you do red and yellow, that was like the real, real one. That's when you started getting into like real ass territory. That was called Captain America. Uh, no, that was called Iron Man. And then red and blue, 45, 35 was Captain America. And then 45 and a 45, we called that juggernaut. Um, there was one point uh, in my junior year uh, where I could do juggernaut. And that was the craziest I've ever done. So 225 was like, like my highest ever. Um, and I think juggernaut Christmas was technically my highest which is a 45 and a 10 two 45s and a 10 but, go. yeah but there's no fucking way i could even get close to that i'll hold that how the fuck did i do this when i was 17 just the bar he'd be like holy shit i'm yeah. gonna clean this uh, yeah Marcus, no, I, oh go ahead that, that's, that's like my favorite i love that my my favorite is clean and jerk for yeah just to double check i love clean and jerk uh mark Rousset says what is your ideal weather winter seems to have come late this year and no one i've talked is enjoying it uh fall like a nice a nice 55 no wind but like ooh, it's kind of cold but let me put on a light jacket uh type of feel i like that i'd say anything between like anything between like 50 like my ideal temperature is like 50 like 60 that 10 degree range perfect yeah um anything like honestly i could deal with cold i could deal with extreme cold what i cannot deal with is heat i hate it when it's way too hot outside i can only i could put on more clothes for the cold i can only take off so many clothes when it's hot so it sucks yeah i feel that um we have absolutely says hey y'all just wanted to mention that i love the changes made in the discord recently great job now what is the most anticipated movie for 2024 if there is one um there's a lot of movies coming out um like kingdom of the planet of the apes is one i'm really looking forward to um the garfield movie looks really cute gladiator 2 um looks really cool uh, um, I'm just trying to see what else we have here. Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse. You know, that might come out this year. Inside Out Cap. 2. Love Inside Out 2. Sonic the Hedgehog 3. 
You know, we finally get Shadow in that. Um, if I had to pick one, though, it'd probably be Deadpool 3. Uh, it's a toss up me for me between Deadpool three and Sonic Sonic three, because I really want to see what Ryan Reynolds does with uh with Wolverine himself. Yep. And at the same time, like I love Sonic and Shadow's dynamic, so those are those are those are the two I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah, and they've done a really great job with Sonic in that um they movie cooked. series. They so like I'm cooked. I think they'll do a great job with Shadow. Uh, last question here from Slippy Fist says, "What is your go to snack these days? Are they healthy snacks?" <laughs> um I have been eating uh as you can see here uh baked ruffles. Uh I like baked chips. Uh apparently they're a little bit better for you. 65% less fat. Uh but probably could be eating still stuff that's way better. There are these like yogurt gummies uh that Cindy and I got from Costco and those are delicious. Ooh yeah. Um my my usual snack is like some salted like mixed nuts. Uh, that's usually my go-to. Um, I'm not a big nut guy. I just can't like you know like I don't know. Yeah, uh, that's fair. No, I mean I don't do that. They they usually come with like these cylinders, and I just go. Like, oh I'm yeah. Drinking the soda. <laughs> yeah. I mean not like that, but like you know I'll get like a nice little swig. You go like Aah. like you eat it all in your mouth. I mean yeah, Rob. Like oh, we're talking about nuts, not like what. Never mind, man. Look. Listen, dude, that's a technique I don't use on cylinders, all right? Um, we. You just said it comes know. in a thing and you just go. Ah. Yeah, but so, then you start like. But then you start like. But no, that's me twisting it open. That's not. Yeah, what did you, you think I was? I'm twisting you, open. You were like so hitting it like thing. a. You were hitting I'm, it like a glizzy for well, free? No, see here, like her, like rip. And like sometimes it gets stuck in there. So you got to like move the nuts around <laughs> to, to get them to fall in. Rob. So you, you gotta stop right now. You have to stop. I have right noticed now. that, like on jumbotrons. And when I was a kid, and you got on the jumbotron, kids, are, kids would go like. Nowadays, kids just go. <laughs> whenever they fucking, whenever they see that, it's insane to me. No, dude. Rob. Well, that'll no. do it for the uh, GG Over no. Easy podcast today. Oh, uh, thank you guys all for listening and hanging out today for episode 213. Uh, we will be back next <laughs> week for episode uh, 214. Uh, see you all then. <laughs> see you guys next week. Bull turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a way better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor. Or a worse alternative. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume. They look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in the bad habit is wrong, so instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from the habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning, flavored air device that does just that. The feel of the Fume is so nice, you can tell it's quality materials. It's awesome. You gotta try the new Solano Fume. It's made with premium walnut barrel and an onyx-coated mouthpiece that is so much softer. Start the year off right with the good habit by going to tryfume.com slash gg and get the journey pack today. Fume is giving our listeners 10% off when they use the code gg to help make starting the good habit that much easier. Thank you, Fume, for sponsoring this podcast.